Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, verses 18 to 23, and then verses 26 to 28. The word of the Lord reads like this. So commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Focus here, church. Be careful to obey all these commands I'm giving you. Show, the love, show love to the Lord, your, your God, by walking in his ways and holding tightly to them. Then the Lord will drive out all the nations ahead of you, though they are much greater and stronger than you, and you will take over their land. Look, today I am giving you a choice between blessing and curse. You will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. But you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from him and worship gods you have not known before. 1 Timothy 4.16, we're jumping to the New Testament. The Apostle Paul is speaking to a young Timothy. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them. Because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Lord, this is your church. We are your people. And this is your holy word. Would you speak clear to us? So clear that our minds and our hearts are transformed by the power of your word. I pray that the word will come forth with love, but it would also come forth with precision. That we would stand firmly upon what you have spoken. Truth is not just a principle or an idea. But truth is a person. For you are the way, the truth, and the life. God, help us to see truth today. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 In our reading this morning, Moses is instructing Israel on the importance of imprinting God's word on their hearts and minds. And the need to teach the word to their children every day in all circumstances. This is why it was so important for us to start this portion of our service off with our kids reciting, rehearsing, or representing the Word of God. Moses has given the children of Israel instructions. Make sure you keep the law of God near to your heart. And make sure you keep it near to the hearts of your children by sharing this. Now he says this, now should they fail in this, they would trip and fall. Should they do it faithfully, their days would be many in the land and God would ultimately drive out the enemies that were coming up against them and that no one would be able to stand against them. You see, God was providing them with a perfect means to achieve guaranteed results. And church, this is a pattern worth following, and it's also a pattern worth noting. The choices God gave to Israel boiled down to two clear options, a blessing for obedience and a curse for disobedience. I know I just said two words that you really can't say in Christendom anymore because if you use the word curse, everybody loses their mind. 
But there are two clear realities that we live in in this world. It is the blessing that comes through obedience, and it is the curse that comes as a result of disobedience. Moses, by the help of the Lord, is is making this message clear, reiterating, if you would, this message to the children of Israel saying, y'all, we cannot see God's law as an option. But God's law has to be, it has to be life to us. It must be something that we put on our foreheads, that we sear into the conscience of our hearts. That we don't just let go by the wayside because it's not popular or it may seem antiquated to others. But if we want to walk in the blessing of the Lord, that we have to walk in obedience to the same Lord that we're expecting to bless us. I love how it reads in verse 26. Look, today I am giving you a choice. Not making the decision for you. Because part of love is choosing. Part of making Jesus Lord of your life is choosing to obey him. I'm giving you a choice between blessing and curse. You will be blessed if you obey my commandments, and you'll be cursed if you don't. That's reality. Church, those are the options. We honor God's word, or we don't. We're obedient unto blessing or we're disobedient unto curse. I know. Wait a minute. That's a, that was a short introduction, Pastor. You didn't even give yourself enough runway. You just went for it. Yes, we've got to go for it. Because the days are getting darker. And we are losing our way because we have not hid his law in our hearts. I want to preach to you from the subject this morning. What about the children? What about the children? What about our babies? I love that when Moses is challenging Israel, he doesn't just say, you keep it in your heart. But he says, make sure you pass it down to your children. And if you didn't know this, a big part of the Christian faith is the oral tradition. It is the telling of our faith story from generation to generation. It is the telling of the law of God to our children generation after generation. And this is why after so many years we still are are, have people of faith after so many years we still are seeing our families walking in righteousness. It's because someone took the time to pass it on to the next generation. But church, I I can be honest and tell you, I am concerned about this generation of Christians. I am concerned about this generation of Christians' ability to pass it down to the next generation. Because I'm not sure if we have anything to pass down. I'm wondering if we've watered down what was delivered to us in such a way that when the next generation receives it, it will be unrecognizable. 
I'm wondering, I got to give you a real simple illustration. I'm wondering if you left your Coca-Cola fountain drink with a whole cup of ice in the hot car, came back to sip on it, and it didn't taste like Coke no more. That's what the law of God tastes like and smells like for many Christians in this generation because we have lifted up our preference. We have lifted up our political persuasions, our ideologies. We have lifted up our political parties above the law of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is the same preacher who was preaching two years ago against a movement that was trying to infiltrate the church. That was lifting up politics and getting up into the midst of the prophetic move of God and lying on God's name. This is the same preacher who stood flat footed and says, this is not God. And today I find myself the same preacher looking at people who have just jumped to the other side now. Saying, where is the standard? And this is why I've been preaching. If you've been at this church any time, you better be careful of sliding on this side or that side. No one likes to chill in the middle. Because when you're in the middle, you get rocks thrown at you from both sides. And we all like to be in our little comfortable political parties and ideologies, but no one likes to stand flat-footed on the truth of God's Word and say, I'm going to stand right here where the truth is. Help me, Jesus. The Apostle Paul is talking to a mentee of his by the name of Timothy, and he says this. He says, watch your life and your doctrine closely. I love the word he uses after that. It says, persevere in them. Because if you do, you will save both yourself and what? You'll save the children. You'll save those who hear you. Now, I know we don't talk about doctrine in church because somehow, some way, over the course of time, doctrine became a bad word. But let me tell you, doctrine is not a bad word. The problem is what people were, were calling doctrine. People were calling dress codes doctrine. That ain't doctrine. Those are standards. Those are personal preferences. That's not, that's not doctrine. And people shouldn't be preaching every Sunday personal preferences. It's a waste of God's holy time. But that's not what doctrine is. Doctrine goes much deeper than that. Can I, can I tell you what doctrine is? Doctrine, the word translated doctrine means instruction, especially as it applies to a lifestyle application. In other words, doctrine is teaching imparted by an authoritative source. In Christianity, that authoritative source is the scriptures. Doctrine is teaching. Doctrine is instruction. Doctrine, from your doctrine, you get your beliefs. And from your beliefs, you get your behaviors. Doctrine is necessary. Sound doctrine is necessary in the day that we're living in. And I got to say this, not every preacher is preaching sound doctrine. Not every person on the internet is preaching sound doctrine. I wish my church would grow up a little bit. And stop being so easily persuaded by by social media influencers and political parties and ideas. I wish the church could grow up a little bit. I know I'm coming a little hard, but I wish we would grow up a little bit and say, wait a minute. There is a place where I can find the answers. There is somewhere that I can go and find truth. Go there. So doctrine in its broadest sense could be any teaching or belief 
taught by, unfortunately, anyone. That's why you can get good doctrine and bad doctrine. You can get TikTok doctrine and YouTube doctrine. You can get angry posts on social media doctrine. Some of y'all, that is your doctrine. It sounds good to your flesh, so you amen it. And the lie becomes your truth. And your beliefs become your behavior. And your life goes downward, and we can't say nothing. I've got to speak. i got to cry loud and let somebody know you can't let the devil take you out like that. It's a lie. Call it what it is already. I know this isn't a picnic message. This isn't a cookout message. Yeah, you know, you should have said something happy. We're going to go eat. You'd be happy with me afterwards. I care for your soul. I don't think enough people love you. I think your friends are lying to you. I think every time one of your friends clicks like to one of the stupid things you say on social media, they are lying to you. Did he just come hard at them? Yes. You were talking anti-God, anti-truth. Like, 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 like. That's it. That's all they got for you is like. What we need is some love. So I'm going to stare you in the face and say, no, no, no. It's a lie. And you're headed for destruction. What about the kids? What about the children that are dependent upon us to receive the truth of God's word and we're giving them this watered-down version of it as if we have some right to stand before a holy God and twist what he says? I'm afraid that we're going to school and getting dumber. I know this isn't pleasant and cute. You've got too many of those cute messages. Find some inspiration on your social media feeds. This generation is void fathers and the voice of fathers where people will stand and be firm and love you enough to say, this isn't right. This is wrong. And it doesn't mean we don't love you. The pastor don't love me. He wasn't soft and didn't have that sound on the keyboard that makes me float. You've been floating everywhere else but to the things of God. Quit the floating and put your feet on the ground and say it's for God I live and for God I die. I'm not in my notes. Go back to your notes. Paul's instruction to Timothy is to pay close attention to your teaching and doctrine, not just for yourself but for those who hear you. Pay attention to your doctrine for the sake of for your sake, and if I can interject, for the sake of the children. I want you to see this. Whoever has your your ears has your thoughts. Tweet that. Put that on your stories. Stop putting all these false doctrines, anti-God messages, and celebrating them like they're godly. My God, we got, I'm telling you, we, we just, we are so foolish, just like click, click, share, click, share. Your like is an amen. Your like is an affirmation. I wish we would be real careful with our likes now. Brothers, let me help you with your like. You never need to like a picture of another woman that ain't your wife when she's all dolled up. That's just simple. That's free. Look at that. Totally free. Totally free. Totally free. Not even in the message. There it is. God, I don't know who raised some of y'all. Like, and what, on what planet is that okay? On what planet is that going to build your wife's confidence? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Even though the cameras aren't working right now. I'm talking to you. I don't know. I just... Whoever has your ears has your thoughts. Whoever shapes your thoughts establishes your doctrine or beliefs. That's why so many people are being led astray, because they're listening to everything else but the voice of God. Because our our apps are open, but our Bibles are closed. And you have your app open, hoping that you'll hear someone affirm something that God wants to die. Every bit of that false affirmation keeps something alive that God's trying to kill. 
and the more you keep going for it, you just keep keeping that thing alive. And God's like, I'm just going to kill it. I don't care what you do. I'm going to keep killing that thing. Are you hearing me, somebody? I hope you're getting free. I hope you're getting free. I, I, didn't, I, didn't. I was so mad at the Supreme Court this week. Not because of their decision. Because I was going to come here with this cookout message. And then y'all start acting like y'all start acting like the saints did when Moses went up to go get the Ten Commandments. And then I realized I got a pastor, y'all. I love you. <laughs> Please don't get it twisted. I really do. So my question to you right now is who has your ears? Because whoever has your ears has your thoughts. Whoever has your thoughts has your doctrine. And whoever has your doctrine has your behavior. So what you pour into the next generation is what's inside of you. And if you got something feeding you that isn't what God is declaring and saying, and let me tell you, I'm going for it because some of y'all were on different sides. Last, some of y'all were hard right, some of y'all were hard left. I don't like none of that, all right? I don't say none of y'all. I love y'all. When y'all act like that, I don't like none of y'all. I ain't going to lie. I love you, but I don't like you. Did he just say that out loud? Yeah, we don't hear enough truth. That's the problem. Some of y'all are just scared of truth. You want the preacher to get up here and give you this cute little message. I ain't doing that with y'all. The truth is messy. And that means you got to sit in it. You got to sit in the middle somewhere. And we're running to the right. We're running to the left. And here's the problem. There can be truths on both sides of those aisles. But there ain't absolute truth on both sides of the aisle. And I watched. I watched. I watched some of y'all. Oh, I'm coming. I watched some of y'all. Use reason to prove one point on this issue and then be totally void of that same reason on the other issue. Because you have no integrity. Because your integrity is wrapped in your party. But when you're rooted in the truth, I don't care if the Republicans, the Democrats, the Independents, the Libertarians, I don't care who says it. They don't own truth. Truth is a person. Truth isn't an idea. You can't own Jesus. So we Christians should be the most confusing people on the planet. They should be looking at us like, what is the matter? No, we're not on your side, and we ain't on your side. We on the Lord's side, and we're going to stand here. But your standard can't change moment to moment, and you think people are going to receive. Come on now, y'all. Have some integrity. Some intellectual integrity, if you would. Even if you can't be spiritual, at least be able to say, oh, I can't do that. That's a fallacy. Oh, we can get, we can get, we can get philosophical if you want. I was going to go to school to be a politician. So we can sit, we can, we can talk about philosophy and fallacies and arguments. We can do all that stuff. I'm telling you, I don't even have to pull out the scripture for some of what y'all been doing. Because you've been playing to your preferences, not the truth. And I saw it on the right the last time, and I see it on the left now. And you just happen to have a preacher who won't, <laughs> help me Jesus, who won't just stand back and be like, oh, it's cute. No, it's not cute, y'all. It ain't godly. It ain't godly to not have a godly standard, to change your standard, to acquiesce to your standard. You better go ahead. Do you understand? Do you understand that your beliefs don't only impact you, but the generations that come after you? It's quiet. It's all right. It's all right. Your pastor still loves you. But if this is enough to offend you, then you ain't mad at me. You're mad at God. You just can't box with him. Your arms are too short. It's easier to fight me, so you'll make me the scapegoat. That's okay, because when you stand before God, I won't be doing it for you. You stand before God. Listen, when I can't use you at, Lord, these people of yours, they don't act right. That's why I'm done. The Lord's like, I don't care about that. What did you do? What did you do with your life? I'm not getting into heaven because of y'all. So why in the world would you miss heaven because of somebody? I don't understand that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be delicate. It says, be delicate, Alex. <laughs> See, let me tell you, what's gotten us to this place? What's gotten us to this place? It's been a slow drift. It's a slow drift. 
It never happens overnight. You don't start changing and turning your views against the views of God overnight. It don't happen like that. It's a slow drift. It's a slow drift. We generally don't move away from the things of God rapidly. It is usually a slow drift, one compromise at a time. And before you know it, the faith you once knew feels distant. People aren't all disappointed with, let me tell you, ooh, help me. (laughs) Folks is disappointed with God, and they've turned that disappointment to God's people. You've got to really learn how to shake things off in this season. There are serpents biting. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit began to really deal with me on this. There are serpents biting. We need to be like the Apostle Paul and shake them off. He didn't allow that venomous mess, poison, to get in his bloodstream. Paul shook it off and kept preaching. I believe the church needs in this hour to shake it off and keep preaching. Because there are some people who are disgruntled and they want to blame the church. Let me tell you, the church has its flaws, but the church is a people. Everybody is broken up in this thing, starting with me. As a matter of fact, I will say no one is more broken than I am. That's my claim. You can say you're the worst, but I am the worst of all sinners. But let me tell you, at the end of the day, when judgment comes, it's not going to be God. Well, what did Pastor Wink do? I'm not, I'm not talking to Wink. I'm talking to you, Alex. This is between me and you. But we're living in a day where people are swinging at the church because the church is standing for God's truth. And some of y'all hook, line, and sinker. You're finding disgruntled Christians, and every time they post something, you don't understand the spirit of deception behind that. You don't understand that their children are hanging on the line. That while you are affirming them, the Holy Spirit is trying to convict them. And instead of standing with God and his spirit, you are standing with the enemy. Am I passionate? Yes! Because our babies are dying. They're dying without the word of the Lord. They're dying without salvation. And we're an accessory to the crime. Because nobody will stand for truth because we're worried about people not liking us. Well, let me tell you, I've been to the other side. I've lived to tell you, you can live, you can live through it. You know what you can't live with? The guilt and the shame of knowing that you stood by and did nothing while people were on their way to hell. Oh, I said hell. I'm sorry. Can't preach that anymore. Might offend you. We might as well do all the offending now. Are you being mean, Pastor? No, I'm not. I am, I am concerned. My heart is breaking because we're walking away from God for silly stuff. Silliness, just, re- just ridiculous stuff. And I've lived in faith long enough to know that real trials will come knocking on your door. And if you could be so easily swayed by someone's opinion of you, what will you do when real life troubles hit? And what about the children? who are watching you, who are begging for someone to live holy. While they know it or not, Romans says that the creation itself is groaning with expectation for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. That we would live Christ so that our kids can see us and say, that's the way you do it. That's the way you live. And let me tell you, as a pastor, I know you think that I have these crazy Bible studies at my house. I don't. I have five kids. Getting them together for a devotion is a war. I know you think my kids know the intricate details of eschatology. I know you think that I've taught them dispensationalism. He's like, what is that? Some of y'all don't know. No, they don't know that. But I've 
I've learned this, that more is caught than taught. I know that as I sat down with my children this week and we discuss all that's going on in our nation, that I've never had to have a full day of instruction about this. But that my kids looked at me and because of the example they have seen in both myself and my wife, they said, this is where I stand. And I said, well, when did I teach you that? He says, it's simple. Wait, wait, it can't be that simple. Nobody told you. No, you were teaching me every single day, Daddy, while you were living it out every day in your life. Would you just live something for the sake of our children? Let me, let me give you this. Somebody's telling me, hurry up. My bouncy's ready for me, Pastor. Can I tell you this? Be careful of language that discounts God's word. Be careful of language that discounts God's word. Here's some language. It's not that bad. Other people are doing worse. I don't think God will condemn me or them for that. Uh, excuse me. This ain't Walmart. The price ain't going down. You ain't the manager to make the price go down. The moment we start discounting God's word is we start allowing our preferences to supersede his promises and his truths. When your preference is lifted up above the, the, the knowledge of God, guess what happens? You have a stronghold in your life. You are bound spiritually. An opinion lifted up above the word of God is a stronghold. Before you had your opinion, where did you go to form it? Your friends? How is the word the most important thing as it pertains to your spiritual life and then the thing that you go to the last or the least for everything else in life? How does the word, good enough, Pastor Mike, to teach us about the all-sufficient Savior, Jesus the Christ, the one who redeemed us of our brokenness and our sin? Oh, and I'm so glad for it. How is the word good enough for that, but not good enough to tell us the way we should do this, that, or the other? Do you see the fallacy in that? Do you see the trouble in that? That the word is good for one thing, but not the other thing? And that's the age that we're living in right now. That's the battle that many of you are fighting right now, is that you're in a, you're in a battle between your preference and the word of God. And let me tell you something about faith. I don't care who you are, how saved you are, how long you have been in the church. At some point in your Christian journey, you are going to run head on with God's truth. And you're not going to like something that God says. And just because I don't like it doesn't mean I have the right to change it. I'm going to say that to this side, and I'm going to say it again to the middle. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean I have the right to change it. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean I have the right to change it. Where in the world do we think we have the, 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 the spiritual legal authority to rewrite what God said? I know this is tight, but you don't need a friend under inspiration. You need a pastor. You need someone who will pull you by the neck and say, this is where the grass is green. I, that spray paint over there, I know, I saw them spray painted, but this is where the grass is green. And let me tell you this, I'm not coming here in the strength of my own. I'm telling you this, I'm, I'm here in the strength of God's word, and I know this, that God's word does not return unto him void. And if you will eat and feast where God would have you to feast, you're going to walk in blessing and not a curse. Check this out. The slow drift of faith is full of eye-centered language. Write that down. The slow drift of faith is full of eye-centered language. You ready for the eyes? I feel, I think, I believe. I is killing you. I feel, I think, I believe. It's killing you and it's killing our babies. It's killing our children. I feel, I think, I believe. I, 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 I. What does God's word say? Because he's my Lord. And what God's word said is my direction. It is the directive of my life. 
See, this is real Christianity. I really believe what God is doing in, the, in this day. He's, he's separating the wheat from the tear. Maybe this is better language. That's a little, maybe too little King James for you. He's separating the saints from the ain'ts. This is hard. Yes, it's hard. It's intended to be hard. It's not intended to be hateful, but it's intended to be hard. Because it should have us all asking the question, am I really a follower of Jesus? Or am I just a church person? Carl, if you would, come out and help me. I know you're scared, but come on out. <laughs> I ain't mad at nobody. This is passion. I'm sorry. This might be my cultural expression might be hard for you to understand. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. You'll find out I'm going to eat a burger right next to you. I'm not mad at you at all. I am deeply burdened. I am deeply burdened by a nation and the church who can't get things that are so simple for us Christians. Should be simple. Like race. Like babies. So simple. And you have filled your ears up with so much of the extra rhetoric that what is simple has become hard for you to discern. Who has your ears? Who has your ear? I told you this is not a political church, but we will always stand for issues of justice. Racism is a justice issue. Abortion is a justice issue. I am amazed at the way some of us responded. I'm be totally honest with you. It took everything that was within me to not even to, to question, yes, to question you. Because I watched you champion one call several months before. One justice cause and then completely ignore the other one because it wasn't on your political side. And it caused me to question your integrity. Pastor, that's a rough word. It is a rough word, but it needs to be said. But pastor, let me say this to you. Some of y'all believe in a whole bunch of lies on both sides of the aisle. Some of the, we had some people totally lose their mind this last political season. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is, this is July. November's coming. Don't act crazy. November's coming. Please act like the saints. I'm giving you this forewarning. It's the summertime. It's not even, you're not even in your, we're not even drinking spice, pumpkin, anything yet. <laughs> it's barbecue season. And I'm telling you in barbecue season, don't lose your head. I know this is hard, I, and I didn't want to go out like this. I wanted to go out like driving off on a family vacation with all y'all like, not y'all like, is he coming back to sew us up? No. <laughs> I love you so much. I really do. And it is scary where we're going. But pastor, I, before you start, first of all, you're listening to your political side and you're not really getting the facts. And getting the facts doesn't mean watching your favorite news. Some of y'all are so burned out in your brain because you're listening to the wrong news and listening to your vape. No, do some real research and stop saying I did the research. Your favorite commentator is not research. It's not research. You're lying to yourself. Come on, y'all. Have some integrity. And at least, my wife and I were talking about this last night. Pastor Tammy's going to get in this message. She says, at least shut up no reason for stupid people to be talking. I did. No, ignorance is foolish to open your mouth when you're ignorant. Ignorant people, I don't know nothing. I'll do whatever he said. We're open in our mouth that we have very little information and knowledge on the issue. And we shouldn't have to have a disclaimer every single time truth prevails. 
Protecting innocent babies doesn't mean you hate women. Where did that foolishness come from? Stop believing. Do real research. The church don't care. The church, we lead the charge on everything. The church should be, the church should be doing what? Do you know that we lead the charge? Do you know in this county that it is the church that leads the charge against homelessness? It is not your favorite politician that you run to every one of their meals to get a picture with them. It's Jack and John and Sally and Jose and all them people who send their faithful finances to organizations like the Water Street Ministries who is a faith-based private organization doing the real work of supporting the people. You got your favorite social media personality telling you that the church is terrible. And you're a hook, line, and sinker. I heard something this week, and I'll be totally honest, it was hard to read, but I had to, you know, I think some of us need to question whether or not we're Christians. Some of y'all just, just if, if you don't like everything about Christ, go be Buddhist or something. I'm so tired of having to change my Christ because you don't want to believe him. Okay, I'm not mad at you. Go do what you got to do. But I'm sorry. There is only one way. I'm, I'm not changing it. And if that doesn't fit your fancy, my God, I love you and I pray the Lord to meet you wherever you go. But there is one way. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And nobody gets to the Father except through me. He's got one name. There's only one name under heaven whereby we must be saved. There's only one name that demons tremble at. And that name is Jesus. And that's what we believe. And how dare you tell us we're intolerant and don't let me believe what I believe. Go on and be Buddhist. Go on and follow whatever you want to follow, but leave our Christ alone. Leave him alone. Oh, I'm sorry. I got a little bit of a righteous indignation. How dare you try to tell me how to reinterpret my Christ? Because he doesn't fit your fancy. Go find another God. Go make your own if you would. I'll tell you, he'll be as dead as every other God has ever been. There's only one God. And I'm a, I'm a die preaching that message. I'm a die preaching the message that Jesus is the only way. That's the, that's the message I'm a die preaching. Don't, don't come to this church thinking you're going to change. He's going to change. No, he's not going to change. I'm going to change the locks. Change the ushers and get you out. I'm about to mess y'all up. <laughs> Hamburgers. <laughs> I, everybody, I got, listen, two, two minutes and 32 seconds. <laughs> Let me tell you this to you. Huh. Hmm. Racism is an issue. We got to fix it. <gasps> My God, you're on the other side. No. I'm stating an obvious fact. There are issues when it comes to women's rights. They need to be paid equally. Some of them are smarter than you guys anyhow. (laughs) Look at the men got mad. Ain't no way you should be making more than someone who's smarter than you. I'm sorry. You are the weak link in the chain at the company. Everybody's always helping you. And you get paid more than them? That don't make no sense. Did y'all hear that? We need to take care of the poor. How dare us with our rich old selves. Oh, people are too. I'm not talking about people that ain't doing right. We need to deal with them too, but that doesn't dismiss the fact that they are poor. And Jesus said, take care of the poor. And he said, take care of the widows. And he said, take care of the refugees. He said all that. Oh, we're going to conveniently dismiss that because it doesn't fit our political party. I don't have a political party. I'm a kingdom independent, according to Tony Evans. I'm a kingdom independent. 
That's where I'm at. I'm going to get t-shirts made. If he doesn't have them already, I'm making them. I'm going to call him. I'm a kingdom independent. I don't care what side you're on. I'm looking for truth. Oh, you ready for this one? Because some of y'all are like, yeah, those are all the issues I'm for. Yes, guess what? And he also cares about children in the womb. <gasps> you're on the other side. I told you I don't like none of your sides. I don't like you when you're on the side. See, the trouble with this is we love to pick and choose what we stand for. Oh, pastor, you, you've been listening to your political side. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I just want you to sit here and listen to me as I read the scriptures. I'm not going to tell you my political point of view. I'm not going to tell you what side I'm on, where I voted. I'm going to read to you the scriptures. Are you ready? This is my response to the issue of abortion. You ready? Psalms 139, verses 13 to 17. Really soft. Listen to me. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment laid out before a single day had passed. Every moment laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. My wife and I sat last night and read that scripture over and over again. You made me all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in other seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before... I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me. Oh God, they cannot be numbered. No opinion. No political persuasion. Just Bible. Pastor, are you are you condemning people? No, 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 no. There is a there's room at the cross. Amen. Abortion isn't the sin that separates you eternally from God. No, no, no. His where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Where sin was great, grace was greater. Oh, you can be redeemed and set free. I'm not concerned about the mom who's had an abortion because I haven't met one that hasn't, at least in my experience, that hasn't looked back and regretted it. In my experience, I can't speak for everywhere else. I'm not just concerned about the people who have gone through with the act. I'm concerned with the generation that's embracing it now. This ain't about the person who committed the act. This is about us that are starting to acquiesce to the culture and say that this is okay. And can I just circle back? Lord Jesus, I'm over four minutes. I gotta say this. This annoyed me. All you men have nothing to say on this issue. And we don't do no research. We don't study. We don't pray. We just talk. 
And if you did research on abortions, you'll find that one of the number one causes for women to say I'm going to do it is because they're going to go at the pregnancy alone. But you just told men that they have nothing to do with that part of you. And what it's doing is leading our men to continue to abdicate the role and the responsibility that they have to their children. And I saw men standing up. We don't have nothing to say. You don't have nothing to say or you don't want nothing to say. Because having a say means you have to have responsibility. It means that your seed is your responsibility. It means that you cannot just go around impregnating everything that you see. That you have to have enough sense. God help me. Help me to raise up a generation of men who will do it God's way, who will stand firm on truth, who will live holy, who will love their children, who will raise their children, who will teach them the truth. And ladies, help me by getting out the way. Don't you tell that man he doesn't have, yes, he does. That's his child in your womb. There are far too many of our children running around without fathers who are wounded and lost and frustrated and feel abandoned. And here we are. You don't have nothing. The devil is a liar. Even our response to the trauma creates more trauma. That's what happens when you let your human wisdom prevail. Your trauma leads you into deeper trauma. I'll say this to every man in this room. If you have a child that you are not actively in their life, well, my wife won't let me. Tell your wife to go fly a kite. A man who doesn't take care of his family, that is the worst of the worst. Scripture, not Alex, Bible. You take care of your children. Oh, it's a little rocky. Well, make it unrocky. Soften up that ground. I ain't been there in 10 years. Call today. They're going to reject me. Keep calling until they accept you. Stop making excuses. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm fed up. And I, if I'm fed up, I know what the father's fed up. He can, he's over it. Enough excuses. I'll be the first to tell you that a federal law is not going to fix the abortion issue. So I'm not those Christians that are running around having a victory lap. We didn't win nothing. We, didn't, we don't win until an abortion becomes an unfathomable thought. You want to do a victory lap? When people in our world are so convinced that they would have all the support that they need, that they won't even think about having an abortion. I want you to hear, some of y'all have been flying on the side. Listen, you know I go equally for wrong. wrong. I'm an equal opportunity hater of wrong. <laughs> a few weeks ago, some of y'all were, y'all were fighting again over gun control. And it, it was, we want common sense gun control. That's what some of y'all were saying. I was just watching because I'd look at y'all and be like, people just need to shut up. Uh, we just need common sense gun control, right? And I just love how these political parties just play off each other. And everyone's like, oh, you just, just every wind of doctrine. Just blowing back and forth. That's what we look like. <sighs> Common sense gun control last week. That's what it was, right? Common sense gun control. And the same group wouldn't talk about common sense abortion measures. Wait till you're 21. Okay, how about we have at least a rule that you can't be killing babies at this stage? This many weeks. Oh, no, we can't do that. Do you see the demonic influence on both sides? If you don't see it, I, you are blind. Or you want to be blind. There's no truth in that. Pastor, why are you cutting it so wide open? We have to. Because you're going to get on your things this week and everyone's going to be fighting again. And I want the people that I lead, at least, even if you don't receive, you can leave here upset. Some of you aren't going to skip the burger. You're so mad at me. You're different because I'll go eat the burger even if I'm mad at you. 
I'm, we're not built the same. I'm like, you can be mad all you want. I'm about to get this burger, and I'm out right after that. I love you. I love you so much, church. I love those of you that are listening because we're going to make sure this gets out today. This is a today word. This is a, you need to hear this today. Before you start typing tonight, Monday through Friday, you need to get, and let me tell you, you know what the response that needs to be to this? We need to ask, answer the question, who has our ear? And if it isn't the Lord, we need to shut some things down. It might be time for a social media break for you. It might be a time for a, a Fox News and CNN News and MSNBC News detox. Yeah. 